tea is one of the most popular beverages in the world, with 3.7 billion cups of it being consumed each day. Preparing enough water to make all of that tea uses more energy than millions of homes do in a single year. So finding a way to reduce the energy needed to make tea could be very impactful. So what is the most energy efficient way to boil water? In this video, I'm gonna figure out how much energy is needed to make a cup of tea using a gas stove top kettle and an electric kettle. With this information, I'll also figure out which has the biggest carbon footprint since more energy doesn't always mean a larger carbon footprint. To test this out, I ran an experiment. I started with just 100 milliliters of water in both the electric kettle and the stovetop kettle. I then recorded how much energy was used to boil the water in both kettles. Next, I increased the amount of water in each kettle by 100 milliliters and ran the experiment again and again until I reached 1000 milliliters, which is one liter. Now to measure the amount of gas needed, I used the gas meter in my home. And to measure the amount of electricity used, I used this watt meter. If you want to try this out in your home, and need help reading your gas meter or want to know more about this watt meter, check out the description. With just 100 milliliters in each kettle at the start, the electric kettle used about 0.03 kilowatt hours and took about 60 seconds to boil. With one liter in the kettle, the electric kettle used about 0.1 kilowatt hours to boil and took about four and a half minutes. As we can see from this chart, the amount of energy needed to boil each increment of water increased pretty evenly as more water was added. Interestingly, with just 100 milliliters of water, the gas kettle was actually the better option. However, the gas kettle quickly started to use more and more energy as water was added to the kettle. By just 200 milliliters, the electric kettle is already the better option, which isn't even enough to make one cup of tea. And by 500 milliliters, the difference in energy use between the kettles is clear. Also, most electric and gas kettles heat water to boiling point, which isn't necessary for many teas. For example, green tea, which is one of the more popular types of tea, only needs a water temperature of about 165 degrees Fahrenheit to brew, and it's even claimed to taste better when compared to brewing water that is boiled at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Without a thermometer in the kettle, it could be difficult or impossible to know when water has reached 165 degrees, so you'd either have to just let the kettle boil or guess when to stop it. With certain electric kettles, like this one I have, you can select lower heating options to save energy. When I ran the experiment again, only this time heating the water to just 165 degrees instead of boiling at 212 degrees, my energy use was lower still. In fact, the energy use was about 30% lower. If your kettle doesn't have measurement markings on it, be sure to measure out the amount of water you need first so you don't waste energy boiling water. On one hand, the energy difference between all these options is actually rather small. In fact, I found that my home uses about as much energy on heating in the winter in about 10 seconds as it does to make an entire cup of tea. However, on the other hand, if all 3.7 billion cups of tea that are made each day are made using a gas kettle and they switch to the electric kettle, the energy savings could be about 450 million kilowatt hours a day. This is enough electricity for about 21 million homes a year, and that's without considering you could save 30% more energy by heating to lower temperatures. While the results show that the electric kettle uses less energy, this doesn't exactly mean electric kettles are better for the environment since the electric kettle could be powered by various energy sources ranging from highly polluting ones such as coal power to emission-free electricity such as solar or wind power. If your energy comes from 100% coal power, it's better to use the gas stovetop kettle when comparing to boiling water in the electric kettle, even though the electric kettle uses less energy. Since the amount of emissions between an electric and gas kettle are close, it means if your energy comes from pretty much anything other than 100% coal power, an electric kettle is going to be the best option in terms of carbon emissions, which is likely the case for most people since most areas of the world are using a mix of energy resources. Now, if you'd like help figuring out how all this applies to you so you know what the best option is for you, check out our app for guidance in the description. If you're interested in this kettle, you can find more about it in the description as well. So to recap, you can lower your energy use by simply only preparing the amount of water you need to brew your tea. So try to measure out the amount of water you need. An electric kettle is likely always going to be the best option to lower energy use and your carbon footprint. 
you can save even more energy by drinking and preparing tea that requires lower heating temperatures. If you want to learn more about what makes tea sustainable, including how water heating plays a role in that, watch this video next. If you like this video, let me know by clicking the like button and subscribing to Go Green Post. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.